Primetime Baseball here on MLB Network. Lots of pink all around for this Mother's Day matchup between the Seattle Mariners and the Texas Rangers. Live baseball here on MLB Network, and it comes your way next. Dane Dunning, a right-hander from Florida, gets the ball as the starter here. What's your take on him, Dan? You know, Matt, it's awfully tough getting a lot of no decisions as a starting pitcher, but he was able to pick up his first win of the year in his last start. Hopefully, his mojo starts turning around. And now, Kyle Lewis. And we are ready for some daytime baseball. First pitch of the A.B. on its way. Underway now in the Sunday finale as the game's first pitch is taken for bowl one. Fellas, this Rangers ball club as they begin play, they come in off a good victory last time out, but one that was just their second win in their last eight tries. Hey, Matty V, you know, if there's such a good thing as splitting a series, dear old, this is the one. They lose the first two games of this series, win game three. They'd like nothing more than to split this series and win game four. Yeah, Bobby Cox always used to say, you got to take care and beat the teams you're supposed to beat and then play 500 against the really good teams. They have a chance to do that exactly today. Drop the first two, but if they can win today, they split this series and move on. Well, the key for him on the mound is to keep the ball down. Certainly, hollow of the knee or lower. Sinker changeup guy, if he's going to succeed against this lineup, he's got to keep the ball down. Heading out towards shallow right. Here comes the right fielder. He gets there and makes the play for the first down. And here's a look at the starting lineup for the visiting Seattle Mariners. Dero, how do they lock up a series victory here on the road? Well, Matt, you take a look at this lineup and one thing jumps out. The fact that there is a ton of swing and miss up and down the lineup. They lead the league in strikeouts, and I'll tell you what, could become a big problem today if this guy's hitting the outside corner. First pitch on its way. Ball one, no strike. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Calhoun waits on it. Two down. Batting third. The third baseman, Kyle Seeger. Digging in now for the Mariners, Kyle Seeger. First chance for him here in the top of the first with nobody on. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. Into the windup. Here comes the 0 and 1. A swinging strike, and now it's 0 and 2. Swing and a miss on a nasty slider right there. Always felt toughest pitch in the game. If you're a guy who liked to work the big part of the field, you were on that fastball middle away. Well, that slider looked like a heater for about 56 feet, 6 inches. Here's another 0-2. One ball, two strikes. Hey, that's a good sinker right there. That's his bread and butter pitch, and if he's got that going, especially early, it's going to be tough to get some runs off him. This one runs in on him as he can't get his arms extended. A great pitch there, and the inning is over. One, two, three, go the Mariners. It's the Mariners nothing. Rangers coming up. You're watching MLB Network. Sam Delaplane is ready to go as he'll be on the mound for the Mariners. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? This guy's a pretty good pitcher, and I was looking through the stats, and one thing jumped out of me, a sub 1.20 whip coming into this start. That tells me a couple of things. One, he's not afraid to throw strikes, and two, when he does throw strikes, he throws quality, and he still gets people out. It'll be fun to watch this guy work in this one today. Nick Solak stands in as he checks his swing here for strike one. And 
and he lays down, off for ball one. Oh, had him off stride that time, and it's one and two. Woo, that was an ugly swing. If I'm pitching right now, I'm throwing that same pitch again. That was ugly. The one two. Ball, that's off the break. Good pitch there on 0 and 2. Breaking ball out of the zone away. Might set up another breaking ball to see if he'll chase this one a little bit farther off the plate. He's ready with the 2 2 pitch. Hit softly down the line at first. And a good throw gets him one gun. A moment now in Arlington to have a look at the Rangers starting lineup. What's the word on them as they try to split the series, Mark? Matty, this team's lineup is dead last in batting average. And I tell you what, that does not bode well for the rest of the season. If you do not have professional at bats up and down the lineup, or at least six to seven guys, it is eventually going to catch up to you. So next to the plate for Texas, Charlie Culberson. And he really thrives in the batter's box here at home. Something to keep an eye on in this one. First pitch on its way. And one here's oh. a slider that's nowhere close, and it's 1-0. and oh. One out, nobody on. In there, and it's even at one. And set up behind the plate is Joe McDonald, as you see the rest of our umpiring crew in this one. You know, you got to take your time and feel Joe McDonald out behind the dish a little bit. He has a tendency to move his zone around, usually set, settling in in those middle innings. You know, all you ask for an umpire is to be consistent. At times, Joe Mack is a little bit too inconsistent, particularly from a pitcher standpoint. Your eyes light up from the offensive side playing in a hitter's park like this. Have to get the ball up to do some damage. I'm not mad at that take. And the slider gets him swinging. Two gone. Good job of making him chase a pitch for the strikeout there. Yeah, Matt, that's the advantage of getting ahead in the count. You can really force hitters to expand their zone and protect. And when they're in that mode, getting them to go after a pitch they can't do much with becomes a lot easier. David Dahl to the plate now. As he'll take a look at an off-speed pitch here that misses for ball one. First cuts for him here with the bases open and two away. The 1-0. The bouncer to the left side. Seeger has it. Throw in the dirt, but a good scoop at first saves an error as this side is retired. One, two, three, go the Rangers. And this is still a nothing-nothing ballgame. Mitch Hanniger the next to bat. He'll get us started in the top of the second. First offering. Sharp ground ball to third. And a base hit, so the leadoff man is aboard. And that's one of those plays that stay with you for an entire game. You want to get the first out on what appears to be a routine play, but you can't get it done. The good news, he has some time to redeem himself. So here now is Ty France as he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. He comes in with that average down in the 240s. Two home runs and a dozen RBIs. Ready with the 0-1. Good hard slider there, but it runs away. It's a ball and a strike. One and two now as that one's fouled off. As a look, now the pitch. Six 
Oh, and they really bunch him up on that one as he swings and misses for the first down. Really good pitch right there. So you're moving the ball all around the strike zone. And then what do you do? You come in. That's a hard pitch for any hitter to do anything with. Just really makes it difficult to get that bad head out. Into the box now, Jose Marmolejos. Yes, he pops the first pitch foul behind the plate. And he's a guy looking to break out in a big way. Hasn't been getting the results he or his club have been hoping for. A one pitch on its way. Turned on that one and crushed it. Just pulled it a little foul. Softly on a line to third. But gloved by the third baseman for the out. At seven, the second baseman, Dylan Moore. So now into the box is Dylan Moore. He takes his first cuts in this one with a man at first and two away. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. Outside, that's the ball. Oh, no. Hey, you want to talk about being in a zone? This guy's been raking lately, and it all starts with his pitch selection. Two great takes, and he's almost daring the pitcher to just go ahead and challenge him. Nope. 3 0. Oh. Oh. From the stretch. Now a swing and a miss as he was trying to flick that one the other way, and it's a full count now. Three and two. Three, two, two out, runner on first. Lots of possible outcomes on this pitch. Waved at and missed for the third out. Not much of a chance of hitting that one, and the inning is over. Mariners leave one. We'll go to the bottom of the second, no score. Now with the plate is Joey Gallo. And you can see his home road splits there. He has not fared very well in front of the home crowd, oddly enough. Shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. And he takes a cold strike. 0 and 1. 0 the count. Here it comes. That was a tempting pitch to swing at right there. A big power guy like this really wants something that he can elevate and drive out of the ballpark. Counts even two and two to Joey Gallo. And oh, he can't get out of the way of that one. So the leadoff man will be on to open the frame. Well, this whole crowd didn't like this guy in the mound before, but now they really don't like him. He's gotten the faithful all worked up by hitting one of their best hitters early on in this game. And you can bet he's really going to hear it if he comes around to score. Here's Chris Davis now. As he will look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. And you see that average below the dreaded Mendoza line. Ah. 
called strike at the knees, one and one. Hey, that's a quality take right there. He knows the pitcher's trying to get him to hit a ground ball and roll two. Nope. No that's offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, two and one. Still looking for our first hit in the ball game. And this is on the ground to short. Could be two. One there on the first. And they get the double play. But boy, was he ever upended at second base. Doesn't come much easier than that. Taylor made 6-4-3 double play and an easy one to turn. And here's the former prize Dodger prospect, Willie Calhoun. He's yet to get into the hit column in the series, 0 for 7. Ready with the first pitch, here it comes. As he lays off a fastball too low for ball one. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Lewis finds some space out there for the catch to retire the side. Nothing doing for the Rangers. We'll move to the third with no score. Top of the third set to get underway. And here comes the first baseman, Evan White. Now here's the pitch. And here's a first pitch curveball that bounces on him there. It's ball one. The offense better get it going right here because they certainly can tell from their dugout. This guy is carrying himself with a presence out on the mound. He's got feel for all his pitches. Two balls and a strike to the Mariners' first baseman. to two and two now. You could tell by the hitter's balance after that swing that he's seeing the ball really good. His timing is right there, and I expect him to catch something clean. The two-two. Hard hit ball to short. Throw to first in time, and the leadoff man is gone to start the third. So with one away, a couple of teams out of the AL West doing battle in this one. So let's check out where they sit in the standings entering play here today. And that'll bring in Tom Murphy. And he's a guy looking to break out in a big way. Hasn't been getting the results he or his club have been hoping for. Now here's a comebacker back to the mound. And he'll just flip this on to first for the second out of the inning. The center fielder, number one, Kyle Lewis. Next for Seattle, Kyle Lewis. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Ready to deliver. Here comes the first pitch. Aye. Jumped ahead with strike one there, and that's something he's going to do a lot of in this start. He doesn't have lights out stuff, so it's important for him to be pitching ahead and have the hitters on their heels. Sinking liner toward left. That's a hit. The first of the game for the Mariners. But fortunately, he'll hold on at first with just a single. Left ball just landed in front of the left fielder for a single. You know, the batter wants that one back. He thought he should have drove it a little bit better than that, but a knock is a knock. And that'll bring in J.P. Crawford. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. 0 for 1 here in the early going. The 1-0. Whoa, that's up there. 
hey, always a good idea to take a couple of pitches when you're facing a young arm like this one. And now he's put himself in a real good hitter's count. Now the 2-0 home. Hey, usually the second time through the order, you start seeing an incorporation of some more off-speed stuff. But this guy's locating, feeling really good about his fastball. Two back-to-back. -back. Fouled away. Here now the 2-2. Two -two. And he comes back with one down and in for ball three. Good spot for an RBI. Put the ball in play with the runner in motion. He could score all the way from first. Lewis is off of first with two away. Too close for comfort, and he did a good job just to make contact. Just hung in there on that one. He'll try it again, three and two. Did well just to make contact there as he spoils off a good changeup. And he struck him out. A 10-pitch battle, but he finally wears him down as the inning is over. One left for Seattle. Home half of the third coming up. No score. We're back now as the Rangers lineup readies for their third turn with the bats. And unfortunately for them, this club has had its issues on offense. Specifically, power has been nowhere to be found. They enter the day with the lowest slugging percentage and fewest home runs in the league, which has led to a lot of media criticism, especially locally. One player told me, it's obviously a huge problem that we need to figure out as a group, but until we start driving the ball like we think we can, we need to find other ways to score runs and support our pitching staff. We'll see if they can show some signs of improvement as time goes on, guys. All right, Heidi, thank you. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. As he'll take a look at ball one. Odor is a guy you have to keep an eye on in the batter's box. He's definitely been known to drop down a bunt from time to time. That's something he's really good at. And in today's game, Maddie, this is such a lost start. I know you love this one. Guy dropping a drag bunt down for a knock, putting him up, putting him down, getting down to first baseline. Definitely sets the tone for the team. Now the 2-0. Good swing. Just got to try and straighten that one out. And the pitch on 2-1. and one. Pitch taken several inches below the zone, in fact. Well, that sets up a big pitch right here, Matt, because you don't want to lose the leadoff guy in a scoreless game. It's tough to work around the leadoff walk. Swing, line, drive. That's going to be trouble. He takes the turn and heads for second. And he'll pull into second here with nobody out. You always want to start an inning off with a bang, and I'd say this qualifies. He gets a fastball and doesn't try to do too much with it. Goes with it to the opposite field towards the gap and picks up the leadoff double. Up next for the Rangers, Ronald Guzman. And he'll hit with a chance to push across the game's first run. Yeah, great RBI opportunity here. But at the very least, he needs to find a way to advance that runner to third. Small things like that in a tight game can make a big difference. As a look, now the pitch. And this pitch is taken on the inner half for strike one.
fouled off. Yeah, you could tell he was ready for another fastball, but the pitcher went to breaking ball, and the hitter just fouls that one off. Here comes the nothing and two pitch. A swing and a drive to center field. That one's got a chance. But this is taken in on the warning track as the runner will tag from second. Oh, and the throw back in is a wild one. Got a long way to go to make that running catch. And here it is again with the show track numbers. Took a great angle at it. Showed nice closing speed. And ended up running close to 110 feet to finally bring it in. No doubt in efforts his teammates are appreciative of. At the plate now, Jose Trevino. Little tardy on that swing as it's well wide at first. He'll come into this one with an average way down at 235. Two home runs and eight runs batted in. Well, I had him reaching at no thin ball. air that time, and he's very quickly down 0-2. Real ugly 0-1 swing there. As a pitcher, you've got to be hunting for the strikeout knowing you have this guy way off balance. Not in front of that one, but he stays alive and will do it again on 0-2. No score here, but a potential run is 90 feet away with one gone. One and two to the Rangers catcher. Definitely a strikeout situation here with the runner on third, so that's smart. Trying to make him chase that slider out of the zone. And a swing and a miss as they got him with the slider there, two away. Well, their chances of pushing across a run took a pretty good hit after that strikeout. It's so much tougher to score a guy from third with two outs instead of one. Basically, you need a hit or you need to get lucky with a wild pitch or a pass ball. That'll bring in Nick Solak as he looks at a fastball that misses off the plate for ball one. Second at bat now. He grounded out to start the home first. The set and the 1 0. Breaking ball that time that misses out of the zone. Now 2 0 with a great hitter up, a runner on third and two outs. This is not the spot where you want to be challenging a hitter like this. This is where you have to pitch very careful. The set and the 2 0. Hey. You know, he fell behind 2-0, Matty, but he battled right there and got right back in this count. An aggressive fastball middle of the zone. The set and the 2-1. Here's a big swing and a miss on the fastball, 2-2. Two and two. This pitcher's bringing it with some high velo. You better get that front foot down early and get ready or he's going to throw it right by you. Moore into shallow center. He gets there to make the catch, and that ends the inning. One left for Texas. We'll head to the fourth, still scoreless. Striding in is Kyle Seeger looking to put the ball in play here. He went down on strikes in his first at bat. The old adage pitching and defense have been stellar so far. They've certainly kept both offenses in check. First pitch of the A.B. on its way. No balls in one strike. Seager behind with an 0 and 2 no count. You have to find a way to lay off that low sinker. There is just no way to do any damage. You're just looking at either a bruised shin or a ground out to the left side. The 0 2 once more. He swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. I'll tell you right now, this guy has a shutout going, and it's been all business. He's not messing around, trying to pick at corners. He's being aggressive in the zone, and he's attacking each and every one of these hitters up to this point. Stepping in now is Mitch Hanniger. As the first pitch sinker misses to him, it's ball one. He's 0 for 1 thus far. The 
1 0 home. Misses, ball two. two. Over the outside half, and it's two and one. Just one hit apiece for both of these clubs. All even now, two and two. Not where he wanted that fastball to be, and it's three and two now. No pitcher likes to take the count to three and two, especially when you throw a non-competitive pitch like that on two and two. That one wasn't even close. Got him to miss the breaking ball there. Mitch Henniger sent packing for the second out of the inning. Stepping in now, Ty France. As he'll take a called strike here on a borderline pitch at strike one. Two outs already on the K this inning, so he'll be looking to do better. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Here's one that misses high, it's 1 and 1. Too much dip on the sinker, laid off for a ball. Now the 2-1 is in off the plate. Hey, he's had great command all day. Want to see how aggressive he is in the zone with a three-ball count. Looking to fade his first walk. Here it comes. No runs, just one hit, and no errors in the game for the Mariners to this point. And it's fouled away. And he struck him out, his seventh of the ball game, and that ends the inning. Pure dominance on the mound as he strikes out the side in order. More to come on MLB Network Sunday Baseball after this. So here is Charlie Culberson struck out in his first at bat. Charlie. Pitch on the way. Count one and The one zero. Two and zero. I don't blame him for not coming over the heart of the plate. He circled this guy on the lineup card when he got to the yard today. He's been swinging one of the hotter bats in the game. Very low strike there. Trying to speed up the game, perhaps. It's two and one. Hey, he's got great feel for that pitch right there. He can throw it anytime he wants for a strike. The count now at two and two. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Really fooled him that time for the first out. You know what was really impressive to me about that strikeout? He now fell behind 2 0 to start the at bat. That's a pretty bad place to be, but then he kind of refocused himself and came right back with three quality pitches in a row to sit him down. That's not easy to do, but now his focus has to hone in on getting ahead on the next guy. And that'll bring up the speedy outfielder, David hey. Dahl. This will take a look at a slider here that finds the zone for strike one. Pitching has the upper hand early as we're scoreless in inning number four. And he one takes and this one high, one and one. Two 
just behind the fastball ball. there. Two strikes Two now. Well, that's a surprising late swing on a heater, middle cut right there. In a fastball count, he's going to have to turn it up a notch. Two and two the count. Fiftieth pitch of the game on its way. And he misses this one inside, and that'll run things full three and two. Well, you don't see it all that often, but this might be a good time for a 3-2 change. If he can locate it, it's nearly impossible to hit. No runs, just one hit and one error in the ballgame for the Rangers. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Hanniger in pursuit. He tracks it down and makes the play to record the second out. Now that right fielder, Joey. Gallo. Two down, no one on base. And that'll bring up Joey Gallo. First pitch coming, here it is. Ball, that's out. Bases are empty here with two men out. Ball. Well below the knees, laid off Go on the no. changeup there. Three and oh now. I wouldn't be surprised if he had the green light here. Matter of fact, I know he's got the green light here. He's looking for something set or cut, and he's looking to do damage. There's a fastball on the inner third taken for a strike. You can really tell they're trying to keep the ball in on this big slugger right here. Is that an effort to keep him from getting extended, do you think? Yeah, I think that's the idea, Matt. But he might spin the win if he starts looking for it in there. Into his motion. Here comes the three and one. Three Looked two. like he tried to pull it there, but he swings right through the fastball. Three two counts are usually a time to challenge the hitter, but I think he'll be careful here. Shoot for the corner, and if you miss and you walk him, so what? That's better than him putting one in the seats. Got him swinging, and that will end the inning. Rangers set down in order. Through four, still tied, nothing, nothing. Welcome back to Arlington. Before we get much further, let's check in with Heidi. Thanks, Matt. I talked with Mariners manager Scott Service during the break about his team's offensive performance so far, and flat out he was very pleased with the quality of their at-bats. Despite the fact that they've yet to push a run across, the game is still tied, and the pitch count for their opposition is really getting up there. They think that making him work as hard as he has is going to pay off later in the game, and that they just need to stick to the process. All right, thanks, Heidi. And now in the box, Jose Marmolejos. He starts off the inning against a guy who struck out the side last inning. How did they get to him here? I'm not sure, Matt, that they want to stay as patient. He's been throwing a lot of strikes. They might want to start swinging a little bit earlier in the count. Here's the pitch. And a check swing. They'll appeal down to third. No swing is the signal from Freddie Ferguson. It's ball one. Very weakly on the ground. The 1-1. One, one. Wow, that's four straight Ks. He's knocking them down. He's looking for number five right here. You can tell this guy on the mound, he is pitching with a whole lot of confidence in this one. The one, two. Chopped weakly to the left. Try again, one, two. Here's a swing and a little tapper in front of the mound. And the fifth inning will start with a ground out, one away. Right. 
Stepping in next, Dylan Moore looking to put the ball in play here. He went down on strikes in his first at bat. Now here's the pitch. Ball match out front. Here it comes. Ball two. two. No friend. Outside and low, 3-0. and Well, I'll tell you, from where I'm sitting, it looks like he's starting to rush his delivery out there. Someone needs to remind him to stay back and let his arm get out front. 3-1. Count full, three balls and two strikes. There's a pitch we haven't seen in a while. It's going to be tough on the hitters if they have to incorporate that into their mindset. 3-2 pitch. Bounce to first. Scooped up, and he'll step on first himself for the out. The first baseman of the play, Evan White. So two out, nobody on. And up next is Evan White. Now the first pitch. Ball inside. Two out, nobody on. Hit hard to third. Throw on to Guzman at first, and the inning is over. Five innings have been no problem as he's got the shutout working. Home half of the fifth coming up, and we still have no score. Welcome back for the bottom of the fifth. Here's Heidi Watney. Matt, I talked with the Rangers manager during the inning break about the team's offensive production to this point. And he told me he feels like they're being too patient at the plate right now. Too much of the time they're finding themselves in disadvantage counts like 0-2 and 1-2. And that's basically never a formula for success. He said they're getting a lot of strikes to swing at. So the emphasis the rest of the game has to be to jump on those strikes early in the at-bat. Okay, thank you, Heidi. Bottom of the inning now. And next, the dangerous power threat, Chris Davis. Here's the first pitch. Fastball runs a bit inside here. It's 1-0. Well, now the Mariners get some action in the bullpen as a left-hander has begun to get loose. One and zero delivery. Check swing here, and they'll appeal it down to first. But Carl Dixon's right on it. He went around, so that's strike one. The one one is taken for ball two. Oh, and not an easy pitch to lay off of, but he did somehow, and he's got it to three and one. Team's been struggling on offense. Let your D work for you right here. Pound the zone. And that misses ball four now. It's a leadoff walk to get the home half of the fifth underway. Well, they haven't been able to scratch a run across yet, so maybe this walk will jumpstart their offense a little bit. Next here is Willie Calhoun. Flew out last time up. the first pitch hey it's a game of execution if the pitcher stays right there this lineup's going to continue to have a tough time and he fouls this one off Pause and the 0-2. Oh, Man, that's one of those. How could you not swing at that one? A good take there on that pitch. Working for the punch out and the offering. Davis gets his lead at first. Nobody out. 
Oh, and they really bunch him up on that one as he swings and misses for the first down. That was some nice execution on that pitch. Spotted it nicely down around the bottom of the zone. And when you do that, especially with two strikes, not a lot of guys are going to hurt you. You're going to get a lot of ground balls and swings and misses down there. Here's Rognet Odor now. And on the first pitch, he grounds foul. It was a double for him in his first turn at the plate. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Fouled away. Two quick strikes, and now the 0 2. Fouled off. The 0 2 once more. Gets him looking at the knees for the strikeout. I always like watching pitchers that attack with their fastballs until there's a reason to start mixing it up. He hasn't needed many of his secondary pitches so far in this one. And there was another good fastball for a strikeout there. Next up, Ronald Guzman. Set and the pitch. The 1 0 is a fastball whiffed on for a strike. This offense has just been flailing at the plate all game long, so it's no wonder why they've only been able to pick up one hit so far. I'm not seeing much of a game plan from these hitters. The 1-1 one, one home. That's it. Ball two. Two out with the man at first. Hey. Two and two. I got to count. Two and two. Hoping to send him packing, pitch on its way. And he struck him out, his seventh of the ball game, and that ends the inning. Rangers leave one. Sixth inning coming up, still zip, zip. Now it'll be Tom Murphy comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. First pitch on its way. 4-1. And now the Ranger bullpen swings into action. A lefty and a right-hander are throwing down there. The 1-0. the left side but it's well foul the one two nope. Outside. We got a full count. what a two. great battle to start this inning what a great job by the leadoff hitter he knows that this pitcher's starting to get up there and pitches. The manager's starting to get restless. Let's see if we can knock him out and get into that bullpen. Line drive, and that's a base hit into center field. So the base hit puts the first man aboard to start the inning for the Mariners. We take a look at the numbers up to this point. You see he's only given up two hits so far today, so he's been hitting his spots all game long. Remains to be seen if he can keep that shutout intact going forward, but I'm not betting against him.
to the plate now, Kyle Lewis, as he takes a cold strike at the knees. It's 0-1. A hit in two at bats for him at this point in the ball game. Comes set with the 0-1. Yep, Off the plate, out. one ball, one strike. Head line drive into the corner, and this one will bounce into the wall. And now this ball is going to wind up out of play, and that will compound matters even further. Well, that's the difference between a harmless error and a costly one. With the bases empty, that doesn't hurt that much, but with a man on, that allows a run to score. Ranger Skipper is up off his seat in the dugout now to make the walk to the mound, and a change is in the offing as that'll be all for his starter this afternoon. He'll wind up lasting just five innings here. Didn't pitch all that poorly, yet he's gone nonetheless. Brett Martin takes over on the mound here with nobody out in the sixth inning. So now to the plate, J.P. Crawford, as the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. No hits to this point. <laughs> Unable to find the zone with the slider. That one looked like it could easily have gone the other way. There's a big difference between 0-2 and 1-1. And but now this next pitch probably becomes the biggest of the at-bat. The runner in scoring position with none out. High chopper towards first. Reined in. And they'll only be able to get the out at first here as the run is in to score from third. He's been great on the mound up until this inning. And yeah, he and his guys are behind 2-0 now, but if he can seal the leak and hold these guys right here the rest of the way, this is still going to be a start he can be proud of. Next up is Kyle Seeger. Lifetime versus this pitcher. He's one for three. Ready to deliver. Here comes the first pitch. Owen won the count. Gets the fastball by him here, and he's in control 0-2. It's not easy to get your barrel to a pitch that high. That could be an effective location as long as he keeps it above the letters. And it's fouled away. Pulled toward right center field. Calhoun is there now, and he has it, two gone. Now that the right field, Mitch Hanniger. Striding forward now, the Mariners' cleanup hitter, Mitch Hanniger. No hits in two trips to the plate for him in the ballgame. First offering on its way. Timing just to tick off there as this one's fouled off to the right. The wind up and the 0 1. Oh, and he dusted him off the plate that time. Some mind games being played now. It's 1 and 2. And the slider's in the dirt as he lays off it for a ball. Two two pitches fouled away. Into the windup and the pitch. Popped him up. Guzman has room in foul territory, and that's the third out. 
So two runs on two hits, one error, and no one left. 9-1-2 and two scheduled to hit in the home half of the sixth. It's the Mariners two and the Rangers nothing. Digging in will be Jose Trevino to start things out in their half of the sixth as they look to shake things up here for a lineup that, quite frankly, has been non-existent today. Yeah, I think if I'm the hitting coach right here, Matty, I'm telling the offense to get aggressive. Just seems like we've been going too deep in counts, and this guy has got exploding stuff on the mound. So I would tell them get overly aggressive on a heater in the middle of the plate early. First offering. Here's a slider to start things out. Looked at for ball one. Some action out in the bullpen. Couple of right-handers starting to loosen up. Swing and a liner toward the gap in left center. And this is into the alley and ought to be good for extra bases. And a good start to the inning for the Rangers. It's going to be a leadoff double. Well, the pitcher can't really worry about that one. I mean, it was only their second hit of the game, so he's doing a lot of things right. Let's see if he can leave them out there now. In now, Nick Solak. He offers at it and hits it in the air to left. Marmalejos is right there as he puts it away. No problem for the first down. The batter, number two. Good job. Charlie. Charlie. And now here is Charlie Culberson. He's hoping to avoid the hat trick. He struck out in each of his first two plate appearances so far. He's set. Here it comes. As he'll take a look at a high strike that time, it's nothing in one. Here's the 0 1. Skied into straightaway right. Waiting on it is Henniger, and he makes the catch for the second out. Now that left field, David. Here comes the Seattle skipper on his way to the mound, and it would appear he's seen enough of his starter this afternoon. So as he departs, he'll remain responsible for the man left to board, but he cannot lose this one. Yusei Kikuchi, a lefty standing six foot even, takes over the pitching duties here. David Dahl will be his first assignment upon entering as he'll bat with a runner in scoring position here and two away. From the belt, kicks and deals. Hey. Upper part of the zone there, but taken for a strike. And he falls behind 0-2. On 0-2 here, he doesn't have to give in with a great pitch to hit. He's got a base open, so he has to focus on making a good pitch right here. And another foul ball. Now he turns and smokes this one into deep center field. And this will hop over the wall, but the run will score. And this thing bounces over the wall, but I don't think it would have mattered if it stayed in the ballpark. Either way, the runner was going to score, and he was going to wind up at second. He drove that ball really nicely. Here's Joey Gallo now. As the first pitch misses high and inside for ball one. Lifetime against this particular arm. Just a couple of matchups, no hits in two at bats. The 1 0. Oh, much too tardy on the fastball. 1 and 1. 
He's going to have to set his sights a little lower right there. That pitch was able to get by him. His swing was just a little under that one. Trying to hold the lead. Here's the delivery. Now on three and two as a pitcher, you've got to go with the pitch that you feel most comfortable throwing with. Dahl at second with two down. And he fouls this one off. Shot down the line, and that'll get by and on through towards the wall. The throw into second, and he will pull into second with an RBI double. So much of this game is situational hitting, guys. Nice job there. Yeah, you've got to find a way to pick your teammates up when you're given the chance, and he doesn't try to do too much right here. He just takes what's there safely on second, and his buddy is high-fiving teammates in the dugout. Chris Davis next to bat. And he'll watch one miss up and away for a ball 1-0. It was a walk in his last trip. Here's the 1-0. Now you can see he's working around this guy right here. Why not? First base is open. Walk wouldn't be the worst thing in this spot. Two and one. Two and one. Here it is. Marcus Evans is on to pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number seven. Number 67, DeMarcus Evans. Seventh inning ready to roll and striding forward the designated hitter, Ty France. Now the first pitch. And this one's downstairs. It's a ball and a strike. Now the one and one pitch is laid off for ball two. A couple strikeouts early in the game, but he's done a much better job in this at bat trying to get ahead and put himself in a good hitter's count. The 2-1 pitch. Hit out towards second. 
And that'll get through into center. So there's your possible go-ahead run on base now to lead off the inning. There's a hard hit ground ball. Pitcher not able to get a glove on it. Hard single up the middle. Yeah, watch your lips right there, Dan. Sent it back right where it came from. Into the box now, Jose Marmolejos. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game so far. He's ready. Here's the 1 0. Not close. It's 2 0. I'm seeing him just a little too amped up out there right now. That's common with hard throwers like him. Running a blazing fastball up there is great, but if you can't harness it, what good does it do you? Now the 2-0 home. Go ahead runs aboard here at first with nobody out. Way inside, inside with three. that one a pretty easy take there. When you're playing close games like this base runners mean everything so he can ill afford to start giving away free passes. Three and one pitch. Hit in the air down the right field line. And this will bounce over the wall out there, and that's going to keep this a tie ball game as that go ahead run will need to stop over a third. Hey, it's hard to say if he would have scored if the ball hadn't hopped over the wall. They might have held the runner at third because there were no outs, but who knows? Either way, they'll still wind up with a runner at second and third and still no outs after the ground rule double. Into the box, Dylan Moore. As he lifts it in the air to right field. Gallo is there. Let's see if they try it. And the throw comes in, and they will not try sending him as that go-ahead run remains at third with one away now. One away for Seattle now in inning number seven. And up next is Evan White. Now here's the first offering. And she'll take a look at ball one. Boy, this is a dicey situation right here, Deaver, with the runner in scoring position. The sack fly brings that run in. This is where you're going to really have to try to keep the ball on the ground as a pitcher. What do you want to do as a hitter, Deaver? Yeah, right here, you are looking for anything above the belt. You see it up, you have to let it go. This is where you have to check your ego at the door. Something has to be elevated and put into the outfield. Give your team... The safe, the throw was offline. And they've taken the lead here in the seventh. Hey, putting together good at-bats late in the games can really help out. And how about this sack fly right here? Good at-bat that leads to his team getting the lead here in the late innings. Now to the plate, Tom Murphy. He reached on a single last time and later wound up scoring. Yeah, guys, everyone knows he's been slumping. Dan, you can certainly attest to this, only amassing a solid one hit in your entire career. But pressure's off now. Maybe he gets hot. From an offensive standpoint, this is where you got to push the throttle right here. You've had a couple hits in the inning. you got a 1-0 count leverage. Let's see if he can gap something. Count even now at 1-1. One one. Looking to keep this a one-run game, the pitch. Oh, Slider laid off for a ball. Good time to be a nine-hole hitter right now. More than likely going to get a good pitch to hit. The top of the order is looming on deck. Good spot to be a good hitter right now. Oh, that's He's fallen hard. behind now, three and one. I'm seeing him aim the ball right now. That's a trap you fall into as a pitcher when you're not as confident in your stuff as you should be. You gotta trust your stuff. A man on third with two down. Full count, three and two. Oh. 
Ready with the payoff pitch. And he grooves the fastball there. This is hit high and deep out to straightaway center field. Calhoun has to retreat to the track, but he has it to retire the side. Mariners forced to settle for one. Seventh inning stretch time here at the ballpark. It's the Mariners three and the Rangers two. Last half of the seventh here, and next it'll be the outfielder, Willie Calhoun. Willie Calhoun. First pitch coming, here it is. Taken, but that catches the inside part of the plate. This is why the manager pencils these guys in in the middle of the order. Big spot. Time for them to get back in this game with a couple quality ABs. Swing and a miss on the slider, okay. and he's quickly behind. Nothing in two. I know that feeling. Played 14 years in the big leagues and still can't hit a slider. Fouled away. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Lewis waits on it, and he hauls it in for the first out of the inning. The second baseman, stroke down. Oh, Next, it'll be Rupnit Odor. He was sent packing on strikes in his last trip. Yeah, Maddie, and hopefully he got it out of his system. Especially now, he's got to bear down. He gets the two strikes in this spot, has to put the ball in play. Yeah. Cut fastball taken for strike one. Very tight ball game. Three to two, our score in inning number seven. Barely able to make contact. Down 0 and 2 now. Tries the slider to ring him up, but he lays off one and two. The bouncer to the left side. Seeger fields it cleanly. Throw on the first and get him score it 5-3 on the putout, though it looked more like a 6-3 ground ball. Nevertheless, there are two away now. Next, it'll be Ronald Guzman. Lifetime against this pitcher. Just a couple of matchups, no hits in two at bats. Now, here's the pitch. Swinging a ball hit on the ground. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Ball. One That's and one. A two and one oh, count to the Rangers' first baseman. Bases are empty here with two men out. Here now the 2-2. Is a wave and a miss. He struck him out. 1-2-3 go the Rangers. They trail 3-2. Jolie Rodriguez has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Number 57. Joe Rodriguez. Ready to begin the eighth, and next to bat will be the outfielder, Kyle Lewis. Here's the first pitch to him. 
you know, because this is just a one-run game, this doesn't strike me as a situation where he's going to be working around a guy. I think he's going to challenge him right here. And he falls behind now, 2-0. Two and one count now to the Mariners' leadoff batter. Set and the two and one pitch. Great job by the pitcher right there, changing eye levels. We all know he's a sinker ball pitcher, but if he could throw some four seamers up in the zone like that, it could work for him. Did a good job to shorten up and protect the plate, and he'll have another shot at it here. Now another 2-2. Two -two. Changes up on him, but that's in the dirt for Revol. Good job going down and hanging with it that time. Still three balls and two strikes. The eighth pitch of the at-bat. And he'll finally just wear him down as this one swung on and missed for the first out. People always talk about how important getting the leadoff men on base is, and, and it's true. So in the eighth inning of a one-run game, that's a really nice job of attacking a hitter and sending him packing. Standing in now, J.P. Crawford. As he'll take a look at a slider here that misses for ball one. The 1-0 one -oh is swung on and missed, strike one. one and one this one, everything we could have hoped for, three to two in inning number eight. One and two, the counts of the Mariners shortstop. Everything this guy throws is hard. That changeup he throws is in the high 80s to go along with that good heater. The one, two. Now a swinging bunt. Swung on in the dirt for the third strike. And he makes the throw to first. Crawford is retired. Two down now. Well, you know you made a real nice pitch when you bounce it in the dirt, and you still get the hitter to swing at it. That tells me that there's a lot of deception in that pitch right now. Here's the third baseman now, Kyle Seeger. As he'll look at a fastball too high for ball one. He could really use a knock here, 0 for 3 in the game so far. That evens it up, 1 and 1. Now here it comes. Two balls, one strike, out nobody on well okay. below the knees laid off on the change up there that's fouled off to the left side as he makes him do it again three and two four foul balls in this AB pitcher cannot find anywhere to go to put this guy away 
lifted in the air out to center field. Calhoun will reach out with one hand to make the catch on the move, and that ends the inning. Mariners are down in order, but they still lead it 3-2. Cannon Middleton is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Ready to go for the last half of the inning, and now it will be the catcher, Jose Trevino. First delivery to him. Pretty good pitch right there. Fastball in off the plate. One of the things you want to do as a pitcher, try to stand those hitters up. The 1 0. Finds right. the zone, strike one. One of the best ways to keep a guy uncomfortable is to pound him inside. They're doing that, and this one caught the zone. Now the one and one pitch on the ground to the left side and through into left field. So the time runs aboard to kick off the inning. The leadoff hitter finds his way on base. Should be interesting to see the cat and mouse with the manager. Does he use the bunt right here? Do we put a little hit and run on? Do we go old school, new school and just let him swing away? Should be interesting. Time called here as with the potential time run aboard, they'll make the move to get a little more speed out there. At the plate, Nick Solak, as he will take strike one on the fastball here, no balls and a strike. He's hitless in three at-bats to this point. set and the 0 1 you know it's great to be patient make a pitcher work and all that stuff to try to get walks but you have to be ready to hit and that was a really hittable pitch and now you've got to deal with an 0 2 count tried to get him to go after one below the knees but it's one and two Boy, he sped him up in this at bat. Now it's time for the changeup. This guy's got a good one, and he hasn't thrown it yet in this at bat. White aboard here at first with nobody out. That's Tough cool. pitch to lay off there, but he did, and it's even up at two and two. Hey, expect a challenge right here. Does not want to run the count full. The two two. Lifted in the air out towards left center. Left fielder giving chase. He gets there and makes the play for the first down. The batter, number two. Good job. Charlie. Goldberg. Digging in here for a pivotal at bat. Charlie Culberson. And a big at bat here as he'd be the go ahead run. First pitch of the A-B now. As he'll take a look at the strike right down the middle. It's 0-1. When that threat of running's on first base, man, does that change the whole pitcher's mentality. This guy at the plate should assume nothing but heaters coming right at him. In there, and he's in control 0-2 now. Talk about challenging a guy. He offered up two in a row right down the chute, and the batter didn't even flinch. Got to wonder what he was looking for. Ball and two strikes to the Rangers shortstop. Man, the pitcher let the guy off easy right there. That old two pitch wasn't even close. I'd rate that as a non-competitive pitch. A ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Fouled off. Here's the one and two delivery. 
And he struck out again. That's the third time he's gone down on strikes in this one. That's a big strikeout there with the tying run over at first base. Now, with two outs, it becomes a lot more difficult to manufacture that guy home. Probably need a ball in the gap to give him a chance. To the plate now, David Dahl, as he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. He's set. Here's the 0 1. In the dirt, and now let's see. And it's not in time as he's in well ahead of the throw. And not what they were hoping for as that moves the possible tying run into scoring position. Well, the graphic here isn't going to properly show just how far that pitch was from the strike zone. That thing wasn't even close, and I think it made the decision to move up a base pretty easy to make. Uh, not fooled there as this ball's hammered out to deep right field. And that is off the wall. He pulls into second safely as this game is tied late with a run scoring away from the play. You know, d in today's game, it's not easy scoring in the late inning. So that RBI base hit to tie things up, that comes at a really good time. Yeah, I say it's not easy. They got 11 guys in the bullpen. I don't think a guy throws under 97 miles an hour with sinking cut. That is unbelievable. He's able to get that knock in that big spot. And time will be called here as with the important go-ahead run at second base, they'll opt to go and get a little more speed out there. So that brings up the big bat of Joey Gallo. As the first pitch to him is a changeup that can't find the zone. It's ball one. One for two in the ball game thus far. One and oh, here it is. Two ball. This inning really feels like it's getting away from him out there. As a reliever, you can't let that happen. Nothing you can do about what's already happened, and it's only going to get worse if you're not focusing on the guy in the batter's box. The set and the 2 and 0. There's absolutely no need to challenge him in this situation right here. Do yourself a favor, be smart, nibble a little bit, maybe use his aggressiveness against himself. Three zero. Here it is. Oh, at the green light there, but it's three balls and a strike now. Hey boys, you talking about getting your A swing off right here? That's what it looks like. A guy with massive power letting it eat. Can't keep that one fair, and now the count's full. Toward second. He's got it. On the first, and this will remain a tie ball game as the inning is over. A run for the Rangers thanks to the RBI double. Ninth inning coming up. We're tied now with three apiece. You're Delino De Shields play. will stay in the ball game now and take over in left field. Now playing left field. Jose Leclerc enters the game from the pen, and because this is a non-safe situation, it's evident that they're just trying to get him some work after having not thrown in several days. Yeah, this is all about just getting him some work, guys. He hasn't a chance to come in and close a game out for several days now, so they're just hoping they can keep him sharp and give him a chance to pitch in a real game situation here. All set to start the ninth in this one, and up next, the corner outfielder, Mitch Hanniger. From the stretch. Nope, at the ball. Oh, 
Oh, and he had him guessing there, and it's a ball and a strike. One and one, here it comes. On that fastball's too much for him there, one and two. It's becoming more and more common in today's game to see relievers like this that can run it up there close to 100 miles per hour. But it's so fun to watch it. He blew it right by him there. The one, two. He's certainly pushing the throttle and pulling it with those four pitches. Statistics class tells me I'm sitting fast. The next one, two pitch. And a swing and a miss. Good pitch there for the first down here in the ninth. Well, there's nothing like seeing a good power pitcher that has a good fastball. And what does he do? He just throws this good fastball right by, brings the express. No chance to put that ball in play. At the plate now, Ty France, as the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. He's working on a one for three thus far. The 0-1 on its way. That misses wide. One ball and one strike. Ball will be chopped foul. The one two is looked at for ball number two. I know he missed with a fastball right there, but this guy's arsenal. You can't figure out what he's trying to do. He's got a lot of different directions he can go in right here. Off speed pitch in the dirt as he takes it for a ball. Bases are empty, one man out. And it's fouled away. And he lays off, nope. ball four. Now the potential go-ahead run is on base here. Now time is called and we'll have a pinch runner at first and that'll be a wise decision as he's the potential go-ahead run. And stepping in, Jose Marmolejos is one away. The runner at first represents the potential go-ahead score. Double play is in order, however. Here's the first pitch. Hey, this offense has this closer in trouble right here. They have to find a way to keep applying pressure. I don't know. Everybody top step in the dugout. Get on this guy and make him nervous. Before the delivery, a check on that go-ahead run at first. Runner back safely. One pitch outside the throw is not close as he's in there with a stolen base. That's pretty savvy base running, right? A lot of pitchers don't throw over twice in a row, so I think he was going on first movement and it worked out nicely. In the dirt, throw goes over to third, and oh, they say he beat the throw safe at third. That can be a tough read as a runner on second to see if the ball has gotten away enough to move to third. You have to be sure you can make it. He was there, and now he's only 90 feet away. Go ahead, runs in scoring position here with one away. Not close with that one. It's way above the strike zone. Props to the hitter right there for laying off with a guy on third. You want to be aggressive, but you have to get a pitch you can drive. The 3-1 pitch. And he fouls this one off. This is a situation where you're going strictly for the strikeout. Infield in, and from the offensive standpoint, you're just trying to create hard contact and get it by that infield. Fouled away. 
go-ahead runs in scoring position here with one away. So there's ball four. And it wouldn't surprise me a bit to see the next guy get four wide ones as well. I'm sure the manager is fine with that. He tried to entice him with that 3-2 pitch, but he didn't take the bait. First base was open, though, so he just needs to make a good pitch for a ground ball. Now at the plate, here is Dylan Moore. It's been a rough go of things at the plate for him so far, but his guys are looking for him to change that right here. Yeah, nothing better than coming through for the boys in a tight game, Matt, especially when you're kind of due to do something productive. Here's the first pitch. Pitch yep, out. Nothing doing. The 1-0. And okay. he misses again. 2-0. A hey, time to start making some quality pitches. He finds himself in a tough spot behind an account with guys on base. Runners are at the corners with one man out. Popped him up. Guzman over to his left. And he makes the catch for the second out. The first base, number 12. The next batter will be Evan White, and he bats in a big spot here. Go ahead, run at third, two men out. Here's the first pitch. Ball one, no three. The 1 0. That's ball two. He's got a couple of pitches to deal with right here, but he's starting to lose command of his pitches. It might be time to take a step back and try to refocus on making some good pitches. Hit the other way out toward right field. Gallo is there, and he puts this one away for the third out. So a great job there of working out a potential trouble. A couple of walks in the inning, but nothing on the scoreboard. Don't touch that remote. More on MLB Network right after this. Brendan Brennan comes on to work on the mound, hoping to send this one into extra innings. Number 60, Brandon Brennan. Late now is the designated hitter, Chris Davis. He bounced out last time up. First pitch of the AB now. Not his best effort that time. It's strike one. Now action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. It's way the 0-1 pitch. Ball one. one yeah, one. and if you get a guy flailing at a pitch like that, heck, you're going to go out there and throw that same pitch until he proves he can lay off of it. The bouncer up the middle. Right to him. And there's one away. Digging in next, Willie Calhoun. He flew out in his last A.B. From the stretch, here's the pitch. 1-0. One out, nobody on. On a great pitch there, caught him reaching. It's one and one. Can't keep the weight back, and he falls behind one and two. I mean, he's coming right after him, Matty. Three fastballs in a row. The one, two. I got to count two and two.
pulls this one into the air out into right field. On the run is Lewis. He gets there and makes a fine running play for the second out. Second baseman. Oh, so here's the left-handed bat of Ruth Nidodor. He grounded out last time up. And now the first pitch. Bounce to the right into the loaded up infield. Throw in the dirt, but a good scoop at first saves an error as the side is retired. Rangers set down in order. No change in the score. It's three to three. Joe Barlow takes the mound as he'll be the first man to pitch here in extra innings. Number 64. We are into extra innings, and next to hit is the catcher, Tom Murphy. The catcher, number two. Here's the first pitch. This has to be a productive at bat right here. I know you want to drive the run in and get the RBI, but you have to find a way, bare minimum, to move this runner over to third. The 1 0. And this one's in the dirt. And the runner will stay put, but the count moves to 2 0. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. Now the 2 0. You see a right handed batter waiting next, but he could very well be pulled back as the situation dictates. And he misses ball four. So he comes out of the bullpen and immediately walks the first man he faces. Well, he's a youngster. You can see he's a little nervous out there. Some people call it butterflies, but to him it probably feels like pterodactyls are flying around in his gut. Going to be interesting to see if he can settle down here. Now back to the top of the lineup. Stepping in, Kyle Lewis. He went down on strikes last time up. Here's the first pitch. Now a swing and he pops him up. And I believe, yes, the umpire signaling for the infield fly rule. So the next to bat will be J.P. Crawford. His day at the plate hasn't amounted to much. 0 for 4, but this is a great opportunity to make amends. Well, if your team really needs you like they need it right here, you have to be able to put your personal struggles out of your mind. Right now is all that matters. Here's the first pitch. Strike taken. Good bender on the outside there. Awesome execution right there. Great pitcher's pitch and an excellent job to get ahead in a tough spot. White on second. Murphy is over at first with one away. Owen oh two, the count to Crawford. Through into center field, base hit. Long throw to third. Boy, those have to feel really good, D. When you get late in the game, you come up with a big RBI base hit right here to give your team the lead. Yeah, no one remembers that ground ball with eyes in the top of the second inning. You want to show up when the game is on the line. Can you quiet your emotions down, take the crowd out of it, and slow yourself down enough to come through? And that's exactly what he did. In now, Kyle Seeger, as he will take strike one on the fastball here. No balls and a strike. Struggling so far in this one and looking to erase his 0 for 4 ball game right here. No. 
And he misses with it one and one. And the pitch misses low and away for ball two. Hey, lots of guys get too aggressive in a spot like this, but he's done a nice job of gaining some count leverage. Look for him to put the ball and play hard. Shin high. That's taken for a ball. Couldn't be a whole lot better situation to hit it now. Three and one, two on. He's got to be thinking he's going to get a pitch he can drive right here. Hitters count all the way. Here it comes. Seeger, right field and carrying well. A ball that's carrying. On the warning track, he makes the catch. And a big RBI there as the run scores to make this a two-run game now. Every team is looking for that insurance run late in the game. That run right there gives them a two-run lead heading into the late innings. Jonathan Hernandez takes over here with a runner at first and two gone in the inning. Into the box, Mitch Hanniger as the first pitch to him is off the plate for a ball 1-0. Looking to change his fortunes here. 0 for 4 with two strikeouts so far in the game. One and 0 pitch on the way. And that swung on and missed on a pitch down. One and one. He's staring a hat trick in the face right now after that swing. He has just got to find a way to zone up a little bit more. You cannot expect to make solid contact chasing stuff outside the zone. Looking for the strikeout. Here's the one, two. Hit out towards second. Fielded by a door. Throw won't be in time as he reaches it first. Hey, I understand it's a tough play, but he had a little trouble getting the exchange right and had to take that extra step. I think if he didn't have to do that, was a little quicker, he might have had the out. So now to the plate, Jake Fraley, as it's grounded sharply to first. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. So it's two runs on two base hits, no errors, and two left. So now we'll see if these guys can get even in the bottom of inning number 10. It's the M's five and the Rangers three. Ken Giles takes the ball, looking to make sure this game goes no further. Save situation here in inning number 10. Ready for the bottom of the tenth here, and next to bat will be the first baseman, Ronald Guzman. Ronald Becomes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. This is going to be an interesting at bat. I think he has to be pitching for a strikeout here, so we'll see what kind of sequence he uses. and a little bouncer softly hit to the right side of the mound. Throw on the first in time, one away. So now up steps Isaiah Kiner Falefa. Though so they might pitch around him here with a couple of bases empty. Now the first pitch. And down in the Mariner bullpen, it looks like a right-hander's up to throw. Lofted in the air out toward right center. 
catch made here in medium deep right center and the runners breaking from third. But not in time as the run scores and the lead is trimmed to one. Got his job done there and made it look pretty simple. Got it into the outfield to bring home the first run of the game and pick up the RBI. So the lineup flips over and digging in, Nick Solak. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. He's set and the pitch. And this is taken outside for ball one. Time to be aggressive with these hitters now. After that sack fly, now it's time to try to get out of this inning with only one run scored. Looked like a slider, perhaps, but it missed badly, and it's 2-0. Oh. Hey, after those two breaking balls missed, you have to be sitting on a fastball right here. The 2-0. Oh. It's taken strike one. He must know something we don't know. That was a center cut heater with count leverage in a big spot. I don't understand why he's taking. Now the 2 1 pitch is looked at oh, off the plate for a ball. And this ball's in the air to left field, and this should do it. And he'll squeeze this one for the final out. And the Mariners have made it a memorable weekend. They take three out of four as this ball game is over. A one-run finish today, 5-4 to four the final score. Brendan Brennan claims the win out of the pen his first. Ken Giles closes the door for the save his ninth of the year. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney down on the field, and the rest of our crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. Thanks for watching MLB Network. Seattle Mariners, five runs, seven hits, no errors. They left seven men on base. For the Rangers, four runs on six hits, two errors. They left four runners on base. Time of the ball game, three hours and 13 minutes. Thank you for joining us here this afternoon. And we remind you to please drive home safely.